A portion of this video has been sponsored by World of Warships. This is a remote controlled car and it's almost entirely 3D printed. I am on a mission to make this thing go 100 miles an hour. I think it's possible, but there's definitely been some challenges. So a few weeks ago, I was browsing YouTube and I fell down the rabbit hole of these high speed RC cars. People literally make these things go over 200 miles an hour, which is mind boggling. Now, a lot of these cars are mostly carbon fiber and very expensive, but I was thinking, could I print that? A couple quick Google searches led me to this, an RC car called the Tarmo 5, designed by a guy named Engineering Nonsense. Since Engineering Nonsense pretty much sums up everything I do, I decided to use this as a starting point. This design is meant to be almost completely 3D printed, so I started printing parts immediately. I'll leave links to where you can find more information about this car, but I was really impressed with the design. It uses a standard Outrunner brushless motor and some 3D printed gears, and then delivers power to the wheels with legit CV joints. The CV stands for constant velocity, and it means that each side of the joint maintains the same speed irregardless of the angle of the joint. Now I know what you might say, Michael, what about universal joints? They can bend too and don't have those annoying ball bearings. And that is true, but they also have a big problem. All right, so to show you guys the problem with these universal joints, I built this test rig. It's literally just a magnetic encoder and a motor. I know, very fancy. All right, so to start off, we'll put this universal joint in there. So you can see the shaft is at an angle relative to the motor, and if we turn on the power supply, it'll start spinning. Now, although this definitely looks cool, if we look at the encoder data, we'll see something that's not cool. The velocity of the shaft actually fluctuates in a sine wave as the joint rotates. This is really not ideal. So now we'll swap out this universal joint with this 3D printed CV joint and see how they compare. Now, before we look at the CV joint results, I want to tell you about today's sponsor, World of Warships. It's a free to play game and available on PC. In this game, you get to command warships in some pretty epic multiplayer battles. You can command tons of different ships from different time periods, countries, and in different classes like cruisers, destroyers, carriers, and even giant battleships. They even have submarines now, which is really cool. The in-game models are extremely accurate and the graphics are pretty incredible. The best part is they keep releasing new content every month, like new ships, maps, or graphics. They also publish content for people that are into 3D printing like me, such as this, which is a model of Captain Bad Advice from the game. I just printed this out of some PLA and it turned out really well. Or even this super detailed model of the USS St. Louis. I might have to print this in the future. I think it's really cool that they put out models like this to engage the community. The game is set up to allow you to explore different types of ships that are from different time periods and sailed by different countries. And guess what? If you're more into console gaming, they also have that now. To download the game, use the link in the description below and use the promo code WARSHIPS to get a bunch of free credits, premium account time, and a free ship. All right, now back to the video. All right, so now with the CV joint installed, the motor is still at an angle relative to the shaft and we can turn on the power supply. Looking at the encoder output for the CV joint shows a much more consistent velocity, which is good when you're trying to go fast. This is really cool considering the CV joint is almost entirely 3D printed. One last cool thing to point out is this design uses 3D printed heim joints. These let the steering linkages move at different angles without binding up. Let me tell you, this thing took a ton of printing, but once I got everything done, it went together pretty well. Some of the tolerances on the fits were pretty loose for my liking, but that's easy enough to fix in a later version. To power the motor, I'm using an ESC or electronic speed controller. This will take the signals from the RC receiver and convert it into three-phase power for the motor. As you can see, when you change the throttle, it changes both the frequency and amplitude of those sine waves. The ESC I'm using can deliver 100 amps with up to a six cell battery, which is about 25 volts. Look at that, 25 volts. Sheesh, that's a whole bunch. That means in theory, it can output over two and a half kilowatts of power, which is roughly three horsepower. After a lot of assembly, finally this thing is ready to test. I don't have a legit RC car receiver and transmitter, so I'm just going to use this old airplane one and hopefully it'll be fine. Taking this thing for its first drive, I realized a couple things. First off, RC cars are harder than they look to drive. This thing gets pretty unstable at high speeds. Also, the tires tend to fly off sometimes. This is mostly because they expand at high speeds and then just come off the rim. I took it back and used some super glue to hold the tires to the rims. I think these are the wrong type of tires for going fast, but I can just upgrade them later if I need to. Secondly, I found out that a lot of RC cars have receivers with an IMU in them that provide stabilization. I might make my own eventually so I can do some custom stuff with it, but in the meantime, I picked up one of these external gyros and mounted it to the car. All right, I've got the gyro right here. This should help me uh, be a little bit better RC driver, I guess. As you can see with it installed, when I turn the car, the steering tries to compensate to keep the car going straight. 
So I went out to test this thing again, and it worked so much better. Currently, I'm only running this thing on a cheap 4S battery, but it is really quick. All right, here we go. All right, we're gonna start off, I have a four cell LiPo in here, with 100 amp ESC, and I've got this GPS speedometer right here, and then the GoPro should have some speed data as well. Now I'm doing this testing at a local park. It has this nice long straight section of asphalt, which is definitely meant for high speed RC cars. But for some reason, people keep using it as like a walking path. I can't imagine why. So I've been going at times where there's no one else around. Now, even with the gyro, I'm a pretty terrible RC driver and immediately drove it off the road. Luckily, the suspension did its job and nothing broke. Undeterred by this, I kept on driving to see how fast this thing could go. This ESC has the ability to go in reverse, but I don't have it set up. So there was a couple times it got stuck and I had to go rescue it. All right, I think I got it stuck. Oh, it's just stuck in the mud. Ooh, and look at that. 42 miles an hour on that one. Nice. The motor's definitely a little bit warm, but nothing too bad. ESC is still nice and cool. Should be good to go. At this point, I was pretty happy with the speed I had, and I hadn't really pushed it to full throttle yet. So it was getting dark, and I lined it up for one more run. fast. It was going really fast and that spun out of control. All right, here she is. Still in one piece, it looks like. Ooh, 46. That's a new high speed right there. Nice. All right, to go faster, we're gonna need to make some changes. And that's where this comes in. It's a modified design, which is more suitable for high speed. I lengthened the wheelbase and decreased the wheel track by about an inch. This means the wheels are no longer in a square and it should be much more stable. I also doubled up the suspension in the back to give it more resistance. And the rear suspension used to get in the way of the motor and I didn't like that. The center body also now has three compartments, one for electronics and two for batteries. Running two batteries will reduce the voltage drop and hopefully make it faster. I also printed almost the entire thing out of carbon fiber nylon and PET. Bamboo Labs sent a bunch of this stuff over for the project and so far it has been great. This stuff should be stiffer and stronger, as well as help the cars keep the same weight, even though there's more plastic being used. As always, I'll have links in the description where you can find these CAD files for free, and you can make your own version. I also used one of these fancy 3-pin XT60 connectors to connect the motor wires to the ESC. Now, after I had everything already assembled, I realized one of the reasons this thing is so loud is because it uses straight-cut gears. So I switched it over to these herringbone gears and it made a huge difference. All right, this is a noise test with straight gears. This is a test with herringbone gears. I don't know if that comes across on camera, but it is much quieter and a little bit less terrifying. All right, now with the improved version done, we can go back to the park and test it out. That'd be fine. I started off by just getting a feel for the car, and I immediately crashed it. <laughs> no, the splitter. The splitter. So besides the bad driving, the car actually handles great and feels much more stable. The good thing is this whole thing is printed, so it's super easy to fix. So now, finally, we can try some high-speed passes. Oh, <laughs> that was gnarly. 
So on the bright side, this passes the new highest speed of 49 miles per hour. And I think it could have gone even faster. The problem is it got unstable and did like 49 somersaults. After seeing that crash, I was expecting the car to be in like 150 different pieces. Oh, it, it bounced through the rocks. <laughs> That's not ideal. No, the wing. Oh, there's a GoPro missing, which is somewhere around here. But other than that, she's still good to go. After some further investigation, it is definitely not good to go. The motor spins, but the car doesn't move. Also, the alignment looks like it's a little messed up, so some more repairs are definitely needed. But I don't plan on stopping this series until I get to 100 miles per hour. I have some ideas on ways to further improve this, but feel free to leave your suggestions in the comments as well. But that's going to be all for this video. Subscribe for more, and I'll see you in the next one.